Hello and welcome back here on my channel. I am Tyrone Sasha Henry and you are watching String Machine. Did you notice that uh, there's plenty of uh, tutorials for guitar playing on YouTube, but hardly anyone is showing what he or she is practicing herself? And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you what I am practicing myself and uh, stay tuned. I'm going to take you through. So let's start right away. I start with, uh, I always start with a pentatonic. The uh, reason for this is I am an economy picker and uh, my alternate picking has suffered over the years. So I use my two notes per string um, pentatonics, uh, pentatonic patterns uh, to practice or to maintain my alternate picking as well. Um, and I simply go up and down so there's no uh, no tricks to start with. I use this uh, for my warm-up as well. And I do this in all five positions. Next one. Yeah, sometimes I do it also a little bit slower. Uh, focus on precision and accuracy. That's more important in the warm up effect. That's more important than playing it fast. And so on and so forth until uh, it works perfectly. Um, my rule usually is play everything three times perfect, not just winging it, really like three times perfect in a row uh, and then you can continue. What I also do is I play uh, the pentatonics uh, from with this, the root on different scales so that I not always uh, in my brain start from the low E string um, but also to get the pentatonic down starting from uh, for example the A string or the G string yeah that's also important to free up your mind and to get more um, uh, freedom on, on your fretboard. So I'm doing this in I'm doing this now in uh, D minor. Starting on the fifth as well, but from the A string. And again all five positions. Can continue that kind of thing now from the uh, D string for example G string as well and so on just like to 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 get more freedom uh, in, in 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 your thinking in your mindset so to speak right for example if you do that now from from G yeah from G minor starting from D string so again the the fifth fret And all five positions again, of course. And so on. I'll, I'll, I think you got the idea. So what I also do is, um, that's more for my, for my picking technique. Um, I play this in, in steps of three. That's like this. Uh, 
goal here is not to play this as fast as possible, but to play it as precise as, as possible. Yeah, that's, that's the goal here. Uh, next pattern is uh, descending and it's aimed to, or the goal is to practice uh, transition from one string to the next one. The next exercise I'm playing, uh, I do this every time uh, with every practice session, um, is on two strings and again it's about practicing the transition uh, between two strings um, in an economy picking fashion. <laughs> to do this over all uh, six strings um, because it gets more difficult the thicker the strings get so the, the lower the strings are the more difficult it gets also on the very high strings well at least I struggle with it a little bit as well to get it very precise and be like that <laughs> Yeah, um, this is very good for, for your precision in, 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 in your picking and uh, your fretting hand. Um, what well, you say that? Your picking and your fretting hand, coordination or synchronization. I have a second or an alternative version of that exercise, which I'm going to show you right now as well. <laughs> It's also a very good exercise for synchronizing, fretting and picking hand. And by the way, it's also a melodically pleasing um, exercise. All right, arpeggios. I usually start with a major 7 arpeggio and it's uh, an octave or octavided uh, major 7 arpeggio. <laughs> That's the root here, it's a G major 7 arpeggio, that's a major 7, so we're starting actually with a major 7. Huh? And what I play is, I play it again in a, in a three step pattern. Also do I play the inversions of that arpeggio so we started here the next one is an inversion it's the same major 7 arpeggio but the inversion of it Next 
next inversion, still the same G major 7 arpeggio. And the last one. Next I play three notes per string techniques and I usually go up like ascending or descending in sets of three, like three strings. That means I play one set, three strings, let's say descending. Now I go up one string and play another set of three from there. Up one string, up one string. Yeah, that's also an exercise for economy picking um, to, again, the transition between the strings to, to maximize that and to have the best possible effect. That's why I'm doubling, so to speak. And that goes through all seven positions of, uh, in that case, um, an A minor scale. was descending, now it has to go ascending as well. An alternative version of this exercise, which I also play in solos sometimes, um, is um, again you're playing ascending or descending. This, this one I I'm mainly play ascending. Um, you're playing sets of three up and then you go again back one string right but this time you're changing position all right it's the same thing but with position changing per uh, shift of string as well And, and I also do this throughout all the seven steps as much as there's frets left, right? So as far as I can get, sometimes I start instead from the G, then uh, G minor, so to have more frets left to do the, the whole exercise. Um, this exercise is very good also to help you um, get all the positions on the, on the fretboard because you have to memorize them, all of them, in, 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 different, in different settings. So um, it takes uh, a lot of time to get the whole thing together. So you have to start really slow and you have to start thinking. So oh. now the, the position change. So where, where was that again? It's like, oh my God, where are we? Uh, and then what's the next? Uh. And then you start with the, with the, with the next position. Um, of the E minor scale in this case. Now here there would be now then uh, the, the B flat major. Uh, and the whole thing changes again. So it's a, 
it's pretty mind numbing at start, but uh, if you got that one down, it's like you you really have your fretboard. You gone a lot step further in getting the whole fretboard together. So that was a technical part. We have about at this stage what I showed you right now. I'm usually about three hours in. Next then is the more creative part. That means like practicing stuff, new stuff that I want to explore or that uh, I'm yeah just yeah want to learn new um, where I'm not so so good at. At the moment, uh, obviously that changes. Uh, at the moment, I'm playing um, the melodic minor scale um, in three notes per string. So now from from G. <laughs> important to practice this back down again so it, it my personal theory I don't know if that is true that's yeah I don't know that but uh, I, I have the feeling that when you practice stuff back down again um, that a different part of your brain is used maybe well, I, I really don't know but that's that's my feeling otherwise uh, you you would just be necessary to practice stuff upwards and you could I immediately play the same thing downwards as well but that's not the case um, you still need to practice that as well for, for some reason and I, I, I think that's probably you activate different parts of your brain or something so um, so if you get it all the way up yeah, then you should play it back from down from here again like completely wrong As you see, I struggle more down than I struggle up, and uh, so that's exactly what I what I said. So if, if it, I don't know, the visualization changes a little bit when you when you when you're playing stuff down again rather than than going up. Um, so you should do both um, to really just like make sure that you got the whole stuff together. And then the next step would be, I'm um, with, with a melodic minor scale. I'm not there yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing each position individually, but the next thing that you should do or that I do, uh, when I practice, um, is once I feel comfortable in each position, then I start, uh, combining them by playing the slalom. <laughs> And back down again. Um, I'm not showing you that yet. There's like because I'm I'm simply not there yet, right? So it's not it's not uh, it's not perfect. Currently, I'm still doing the positions uh, individually to really have to, do not have to uh, memorize them anymore, right? And then just like the combination to 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 get them all sitting together over the whole fretboard up and back down again. That would be the next step. 
All right. So that, that's one thing that I'm doing currently. And then there's another thing that I currently do is um, I'm playing, I call it the Locrian pentatonic. Um, Rick Beato, I think there was something he had as well about the melodic minor pentatonic. Um, that's a different way of, of, of viewing it. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's also, that's also right. So me personally, I, I refer to it as the, the Locrian pentatonic and this is this scale here. <laughs> Very, very distinctive sounding pentatonic in that case. In, in that case, it's it's a yeah, it's a two note per string uh, pattern. You could call that pentatonic if you wanted to. So and that has five different positions again. So we need to practice all five positions of that. So that's another one that I'm currently doing. <laughs> Next position. I love the sound of that. I really do. And uh, again, I want to have it visualized uh, over the whole fretboard because uh, it, it really, you can play it over a lot of stuff. I've been playing around with it already, but I'm still struggling with uh, just with the freedom over the fretboard, not having to think anymore where, where what pattern and what position is and um, just to float freely. Um, through the different positions, but uh, yeah, there are several several patterns that I like distinctively. <laughs> you can play that over a Phrygian. Awesome, awesome sounding, but yeah, it's like it wasn't that bad what I that what I've done right now. But you know, there there is still we are far away from perfection and from the the freedom of not having to think in between where are we in in in, in our positions and all that. So this is something still have to still have to work on. Another another position of this scale that I like is this one. This is actually a major seven, but a Lydian version. So the, that sound. Yeah. 
But now with the uh, with the thirteen or with the sixth. You wouldn't you wouldn't really be able to tell that this is actually a major arpeggio, so to speak. It, it's 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 a Lydian arpeggio with the major seven with an augmented four. Yeah, but it still gives you this more fridging kind of sound. But in fact. The chord you build from that is a major seven. Yeah. So very very interesting scale, and uh, yeah, this is one that I that I practice as well. So I practice the um, melodic minor, and I practice what I call the Locrian pentatonic. Um, how I come to the idea of this is the Locrian pentatonic. Um, I'll do in another episode. There is more pentatonics that you can build um, from different scales. But yeah, in the next episode or in the other episode, I'll take you through it. So this was it for now. Um, just wanted to show you what I practice. There are bloopers in there. There are mistakes in there because it's practicing. It's not. I'm, I'm not aiming to show you the perfect. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you could gain a little motivation for your own practicing and some ideas um, uh, for, of your practicing as well. I'm signing off for now. If you have questions, put them down in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Um, there's more videos coming. Um, also reviews, uh, etc. And for now, I'm saying so long.